Yeah. So uh, we'll be talking about how to build a stack for big data system, uh, a generic stack. Uh, obviously, the actual am I audible? Yeah. Obviously, the actual compute and uh, logic will depend upon your application. But uh, I'll try to pull up things which are common to uh, most or many of these systems. Uh, this is a bit about uh, our company, uh, branding stuff, and some bit about me. So uh, we at Cloud kind of crawl and extract large scale data, and we convert it into structured format. So what we do is uh, kind of we can give you data feed for all the mobile reviews on the web, or all the travel data, uh, travel data review in near real time. And we have appropriate feeds for that, and clients can connect to our API and they can get the data. Uh, this is the sample output. It doesn't really matter here. Uh, so we'll uh, kind of so this is the agenda of the talk. Um, we'll set up the context that what we are going to cover in or deep. Obviously, each of these topics uh, will take more than half an hour, and uh, all taken together, uh, we can't cover much. I'll just give a very high level overview that what what systems should be there. And uh, we, what are the choices you have to make, and what are the key things to be taken care of? Then there are things which should have been covered in a uh, longer lecture, maybe for a couple of hours, but we can't take that. Uh, it's mentioned here. Yeah. So kind of, uh, if you build a system for big data, uh, you will eventually end up with all this uh, multiple nodes, incoherent set of coherent nodes, uh, coherent ones. What it means is you will have kind of ten servers which deal with DB related stuff. 14 servers which deals with job <laughs> scheduling or one kind of job and another 13 which deals with something else. And then compute layer where the actual processing logic lies, uh, you will have multiple processes, uh, quite often inter interdependent <coughs> upon each other. Uh, what it means is, uh, so probably output of one is uh, eaten or uh, processed by the um, so some other process. So they have to communicate somehow and more often than not, uh, they'll be on different servers. Or different nodes. Um, we'll have data storage layer and multiple middleware. Data storage is a critical component, and traditionally people had been using uh, SQL based uh, storage layer. But with the advent of big data, it's not very uh, easy to scale in, in, in that layer. Uh, kind of requirements, something like join and all, can't be uh, easily met. It can be met in other systems also, but you make multiple trade offs. So, is consistency important? So how important is high availability? So those things come in storage layer and multiple middleware. Over there, we'll talk only about queues. So it's kind of uh, almost always present in these systems that multiple processes across the nodes, they talk via uh, some messaging layer. Tools for installation, monitoring, and scheduling. These are pretty important, actually. Once you have to, um, uh, you operate on hundreds of servers or thousands of servers, uh, people uh, monitoring and kind of uh, managing them um, becomes a real pain. So unless you really think well about these things, uh, systems kind of become pretty painful, uh, pretty soon. There are other things which should have been covered like uh, source control, uh, version control, code review, continuous integration, but they are not closely related, we'll leave them. Yeah, we'll start with, uh, so the way I thought is, uh, we'll start with how to install or what are the things to take care of when you kind of try to build or install such systems. Then uh, one or two examples from each layer, one messaging layer, one from storage layer, and then a sketch of a sample demo. We'll start with the installation. So um, simplest thing is you make, you keep some image that this is our DB uh, system image or this is queuing system image. And whenever you have to install one, you kind of uh, bring it up. Or if it's pa part of some cluster or uh, cluster, then you add it by appropriate mechanism. Individual, uh, this system is pretty good. There's no maintenance cost and it, it scales also. But uh, main problem with that is uh, how do you uh, save back the changes? So let's say uh, there's a system with some 10 custom software and you want to modify two. So um, you have to make a new image and save it back. So tomorrow you may have to make small <coughs> modification to something else. You again have to uh, make a modification and save it back. So that doesn't scale. So tomorrow you'll have same server version 3 and same server version 3.2.2.2. So and, and you'll be confused what has to be used where. At the individual level, we have kind of pretty uh, robust and well-tested uh, uh, softwares like Aptinium, which, which work. And they, they work well for the individual system installation, so individual package installations. 
I don't know how many of you use etc keeper, but it kind of saves your uh, config data in in Git, Git or some other version control system. So kind of uh, so these things work at individual machine level or uh, individual package level. Uh, this works for one individual one purpose, uh, but if the purpose changes, this doesn't work. There's no way or there's no apparent or easy way to scale this to multiple servers. What people do is they kind of uh, write scripts to manually install Apache on all 10. And if you have to modify config file, then it becomes slightly painful. Uh, kind of, there's no silver bullet. This, if you really want to do it well, it's a difficult problem. And there are solutions for it, which have been recently attempted. And Chef and Puppet, they are kind of popular choices. But uh, how many of you have used one or both of these? Yeah, can you, you will agree that it has pretty steep learning curve and it has its own issues but point is once you set it up and uh, and the, the kind of things it promises and these tools do them well what about, what about? Yeah. yeah you could have put there but uh, I just picked two and I'll talk only one huh. so uh, before going further I wanted to introduce something else uh, these things are difficult to get started and pretty often you'll make mistakes so rather than making mistakes on a real system, we kind of have something virtual, try out everything, and then if it works well, we uh, replicate it on the servers. <coughs> uh, many of you, you would have used virtual box on your laptops also. So it's pretty easy to install and download, uh, download and install. And inside uh, um, Debian, you can run Ubuntu, or inside Ubuntu, you can run something else. For all practical purposes, it gives you illusion of a, uh, of a real system something like what uh, EC2 does. So you can do it on uh, your desktop also. Uh, similar solutions exist for uh, EC2 comms or cloud also or servers also. For example, whole of EC2, this is a mistake it's done in EC2, is built uh, using Gen. And then there's Vagrant, which is uh, more of a wrapper around uh, a virtual box. And it allows you to configure uh, virtual box in a headless way. You can do init, up, and SSH. So that these are three set of commands. And so it brings up the instance, and you can SSH inside that. <coughs> For initial um, setting up purpose, these are two pretty useful things. So you can set a port forwarding. Let's say Apache runs on the port 80 of internal machine. You want to access it from external. So that easy way to port forward from internal to external one. And also, there's a um, provision for shared directory. So you, you can mark some directory as shared, and whatever you write in that directory goes inside the internal machine also. So you don't have to copy data between your uh, your machine and the virtual one. So out of those two, Chef and Puppet, uh, I'm giving example of uh, Chef. What it does is a kind of basic idea behind the, this is they want to code the installation. So whatever you do in, in process of installing a new server, they want uh, you to put that in, in code and goes in version control. So individual installation file will look uh, will look pretty simple. So for example, to install a package frame, you just say action equal to install and it goes in some file. So this is the lower most, uh, lowest part. And then there are things like which machine has which roles. So web server uh, machine will have uh, three softwares and a DB machine will have four software. We just have to name them that these mas this machine has these roles. And when you run the chef client, it installs those packages. So uh, there's a, uh, in simplest form, you can have a uh, chef on your local machine also, and that's called chef solo. And if you want to have a centralized thing, which kind of actually is needed for, for a large installation, then uh, uh, this tool can talk to the server and it gets all the data and metadata from there. And individual installation things, uh, it's called cookbook and that, that can be stored either locally or on the server. So I think in the first part, we tried to cover how to install uh, new software or what are the tools of choice to install new software. Which uh, software to install, it depends upon your application layer or logic. So next, uh, I'll take a few things from other layers like storage and, and messaging layer and try to, uh, and 
note down some points regarding those. What are things to take care? So first thing is when you run multiple processes, there should be somebody to take care of those. You should know what's happening, how much memory it's taking. Do you want to kill it? Do you want to restart it? Do you want to kill it every three hours or do you want to restart it whenever memory uses goes beyond a point? So again, I picked two tools, God and Monet. There could be others also. And we'll deal in some details about God. So this is a simple code snippet I'll uh, kind of skip over. Uh, thing is you can see which uh, you can uh, specify what command to use for start, what command to use for stop and uh, it's not here. So yeah, you could have uh, uh, written in things like if memory uses goes beyond uh, 300 MB restarted. So those things you can do. And once uh, this uh, God runs on a machine, you can remotely kill or restart the processes. Other is uh, once you have multiple processes running, uh, it's no more feasible to manually schedule them or hard code their scheduling because uh, machine uses varies. And if you have multiple servers, uh, more often than not, you'll be surprised if you uh, kind of graph um, plot their usage or see the average usage, it's uh, hardly ever more than 50%. So that's where something like job scheduler comes in picture and it kind of uh, it allows you to utilize them in a better way. Uh, so again, there are many choices, uh, rescue, bin stock, silvery, uh, or in the simplest form, people use cron or, or some queues. Things to take care here is uh, once you make choices or try to pick a new system for job scheduler, you should see if it um, takes, it has consideration for priorities, if it has consideration for tags, Priority is uh, some jobs you want to run, um, uh, give more priority than others. It may be important, others can wait. Tags is, uh, this is something I really like. So process can have multiple tags, so it's some uh, host specific or it's some uh, cat set specific and only some workers will run on them. Option for retry and ability to inspect the queues. So kind of for each of these, uh, give two or three of these, uh, they, may not, uh, they may not satisfy all the criteria. Data storage layer, uh, so a lot of buzzword or a lot of articles you will see coming uh, coming in this layer because many things have been done. And uh, the seminal paper by Amazon, uh, I think it's called Dynamo or something, that really lays down the rules and more, many of these systems kind of use that. Uh, so. Again, thing is, uh, you what what's the thing you want to give priority to? So, do you want to give priority to consistency that if a data has been written, it should be written in all the replicated clusters, or do you want to give uh, priority to availability so that if data has to be on four machines, uh, even if it's written on two and two copy later, it's okay. <laughs> or uh, there. Or what the use cases are like? Uh, is it a graph-based system or is it a document-based system? Do you want to handle your data at the level of documents, um, or do you want to handle at key value or key value level? Key value, I guess, uh, most of of, of us uh, kind of misuse SQLite or MySQL to use key value. There are other systems which kind of uh, do it at a distributed level. Um, there are. There are uh, softwares for full text search, I guess Lucene and Solar are the most popular one. And briefly mention Voldemort, which is one of the popular key value stores. And uh, this is the thing I wrote first. So in the long run, what happens in uh, these software that maintenance cost is more than it kind of outperforms anything else. So kind of amount of time you have to give to let's just replicate the data. What happens if a node dies, which happens pretty often. So all those things should be uh, considered. And with that respect, I really like Voldemort. So it's a simple key value store. Uh, it does only one thing and does it nicely. Uh, it's pretty simple to add a node or remove a node. You can specify um, if you want to write, uh, write some data, how many nodes it should go to. And when you want to read how many nodes it should be read from to be considered a valid data. So um, in the first part, we wrote that um, we saw that if there are multiple processes, they'll talk to each other, they'll be interdependent. So most common way to uh, kind of uh, base, uh, model this interdependency is to talk via some other layer. Quite uh, often that happens to be the messaging layer. 
and if you see um, compared to other things i haven't written any choices here so many people don't use rabbit mq I, I haven't understood yet why they don't use except for that you have people in the team who, who is uh, pretty familiar or is god or something else but you should just use this it implements uh, AMQP, I guess it implements some other protocols also. Its exchange server is pretty robust, so you can have models like uh, direct subscription, topic, or fanout. Direct is simple, I send message and you, you receive it, nobody else knows. Uh, fanout is, uh, it, it's kind of being broadcast to, to all the work, workers. And topic could be that a set of workers are interested in, in, in one thing. For example, if you try to <laughs> model uh, um, some BSE or NEC, you will have pretty often topic server will be used because there are many people who will be interested in stock prices of a company. Uh, it has good options for uh, high availability. You can use DRBD or Pacemaker and it has been well tested. Many people have used it and it hardly ever fails. Uh, there is one catch though, you should not try to use DRBD. DRBD is disk level replication across the machines. You should not try to use it on Amazon or EC2 because that itself is a virtual layer and you don't want to do a disk replication on a virtual layer. So I guess um, these were the components I want to talk about and I had sketch for a demo which I can't do. So simple demo we could have done is uh, we could have individual workers could have generated uh, Markov sentences randomly and we could have stored them in uh, in a Voldemort store, which would be globally available, and other set of uh, workers which would be uh, kind of waiting for the new job. After storing this, we could have enqueued these in RabbitMQ or, or some other uh, job scheduler, and other set of workers could have worked there. So, but this is uh, a kind of cheating. So, basic cheating comes here is there is no interdependence in, in the processing of those records, uh, they are individually uh, processed. That makes the thing, uh, thing simpler. If, if there is interconnection between those records, then uh, modeling such system becomes difficult. But this demo I can't show you because my laptop doesn't work. Uh, there are other things which could have been part of this talk, but uh, yeah, I'm almost done. Uh, but I didn't add in detail because, uh, because of lack of time. So thing is, uh, on this level, you need a monitoring system for alert and dashboards. Otherwise, again, you will have no idea. So in monitoring system, I'll just talk about Sensu and Griffith. So Sensu, you can think of it as a rotting layer. So you, each of your individual processes, they send some data, they send some report, they uh, send some logs to Sensu, and it decides what to do with it. So it can send that to Twitter, it can send that to your IM message, it can send that to page duty. Or if it's something like time series data, you can send that to some uh, graphic engine like a graphite. So that will make a graph and you can see uh, something blew up or something is being utilized at a low level. There was one more thing, uh, if you kind of try to build or if you design a, such a system, you should take care is, is distributed log collection. Uh, again, I think one of the speakers today in this series talked about uh, Splunk in there. So that and other is a proof and spread. And these things can be used for multiple things. So uh, their common requirement or a uh, common goal of these tools is to aggregate data from multiple processes. So it can be used to uh, uh, route logs or aggregate logs. It can be used simply to move data from one system to another. So some points about Flume, it allows multiple tokens. So there's a source of data which happens to be multiple uh, nodes or multiple uh, processes. And there's a sync. You may want to store this in HPS, you may want to store this in SDFS or somewhere else. And how the uh, data goes from source to sync is specified by topologies. So that uh, kind of, you have to design that which servers are loaded or which you want to put randomly for uh, log data edits. You know. I guess that's all it was pretty fast and I didn't go in deep of anything because we could not have done. So each of these will take more than half an hour. Uh, I'll be available here uh, today as well as tomorrow. We can talk with them.